this video, I'd like to introduce you to what I consider to be the best tabletop hobby level incubator you can buy. Uh, they're relatively inexpensive, and this one is called the Genesis, and it's model 1588, made by GQF. And I think this is great for classroom use for a number of reasons. Uh, one is that this unit has a nice clear top, for example, which means that students will be able to look through and see the incubation process and uh, it has a much wider view than some other units made by the same company have. The other thing is, um, you'll notice that there's no adjustment knob on top, which a lot of incubators also have. This incubator comes uh, with an electronic thermostat preset. Now, I verified the temperature prior to making this video to see that it operated at 99.8 degrees, and since in normal forest air units you want 99.5 degrees, so 99.8 is really a good setting. So you shouldn't have to fiddle with it. Also, when these units sit in classrooms, uh, students sometimes come up and want to fiddle and adjust, and uh, they don't have that opportunity with a preset unit like this. So I'll go over how to put the components together. This is how it comes from the manufacturer. The first thing that will go in is this tray that keeps the bottom clean, but it also has two reservoirs for water. So this goes in the bottom. The next thing that goes on top of this reservoir tray is something we call hardware cloth. And this is a screen that if you were, for example, to put your eggs in the incubator without an automatic turner, they would rest on top of the screen. And also when your chicks hatch, they'll walk on the screen and it keeps them out of the water. Now, I'm going to demonstrate all the extras that you can get with it. So, rather than turn eggs by hand, we're including this automatic egg turner, which also comes from GQF. It has a capacity for 42 chicken eggs. Now they also send with the automatic turner replacement racks for quail eggs. Now you have a 42 egg capacity if you're doing chicken eggs, but if you're doing quail eggs you can actually handle 120. Each one of these racks holds 20 eggs. They change out easily and there are cotter pins at the end that you pull out. You pull this white strip off and then these each lift out and are easily removed and then you install the quail egg replacement cups. They also have another extra that's for goose eggs for example and it holds fewer eggs but has a larger capacity. So you would put your egg turner in the bottom sitting on top of the screen And here's the motor that it just rocks it back and forth. It um, has a rate of rotation of about once every four hours for a complete revolution according to the uh, instruction manual that came with it. There's also a groove in the corner here that accommodates the cord that comes out. There's a corresponding groove in the top that the cord will pass through. And that's all there is to setting up the unit. It's ready to go. So there are two plugs that come off of it. One, of course, is going to be for the automatic turner. And the other, you'll notice, is for the DC uh, transformer. And it also plugs into a regular 110 outlet. Now the transformer plugs in on top, right here. And then the unit's running. There's no other setting for you to do. All that you do is let it set up for 24 hours ahead of time. If you're doing this for the first time and have never hatched eggs before, I recommend that you not use uh, valuable chicken eggs, for example, your first time around. Also, there are instructions in the manual that show you how to make adjustments to this preset thermostat. Don't make any adjustments right off the bat. Run a hatch, and if it goes really well, then you know the settings are perfect. If your chickens hatch early, then you know that the temperature was probably too high. If they hatch late, then you know that the temperatures were too low. So then you'll make adjustments according to the instruction form that comes within the owner's manual. Now they also have a thermometer that comes with it. This thermometer is on a thin piece of lucite, it looks like. This would lay right on top of the eggs, and then that allows you to observe the temperature inside. If you're doing this as a course with children, I mean, there are a lot of different things that they can learn from it. For example, they could weigh the eggs before they begin their incubation process, and they should lose 
13% of their weight on average throughout the hatching or incubation process, which is 21 days for chickens. If you're hatching something other than a chicken, always consult the hatching schedule to make sure that you're going to have them in for the proper amount of time. Now, something that's happened often and I get emails about is that there's often a power loss. And if you're in the springtime and your chickens, uh, your eggs are in here and they're incubating, you're maybe at the 15th or 16th day. If you lose power and it cools down, obviously you're going to lose your entire hatch. So what's really interesting about this unit is it runs on 12 volt DC. That's why we have this transformer here. The fact that it runs off 12 volt DC means that you can also have a backup system in the event of a power loss. So this adapter is available also from GQF and it plugs into the exact same plug that your normal power source would and this allows you to connect to a 12 volt battery. 12 volt batteries are pretty available. For example, um, you find them in cars, lawn tractors, boat motors and things like that, snowmobile. Uh, so in an emergency you could pull a, a battery from almost any source that you have. In this case I have a 12 volt battery already standing by and batteries are always marked positive and negative and make sure that if you're setting up a battery and you're going to run this in an emergency situation that you keep the battery away from children and pets so that nobody gets a shock. So you would hook the negative side first which is the black insulator and the positive side last which is the red and then the unit's running again. So in a pinch you could hook this up to a battery. Of course, the bigger the battery and the more voltage it holds, the more amp power that it has, uh, the longer that the unit's going to run off of it. Now, the only thing that runs when you're hooked up to a battery is going to be the heating unit and the fan that circulates the air. The automatic turner is not connected to the battery so that your eggs won't continue to rotate on their own um, when you're on auxiliary power like this. So I recommend that if you get to that point and you're in an emergency situation and you're going to run this off of a battery, you're going to have to remove the automatic egg turner and turn the eggs by hand. If you're turning off the battery source, again, disconnect positive first and then negative last. Unplug it and then when your power is restored, just replug in the original adapter. And we're back on track again. Also, if for some reason you had to move them in an emergency, you could hook the same system up in your car, for example, and transport eggs running off a battery, keeping them warm. So in my opinion, if you're setting up for classroom use and you're going to do a hatch module and it's your first time around, this is the most automatic and most complete system that I can recommend.